separation for the different types of metal. So let's just minimize this and then open up my final texture right now because I mean I could go and mess with my other texture but I'm gonna just mess with this so I'll just call this lighting turn that off fuse and we want to just mess with the areas that are a problem um, the other thing that I'll need or that I'll want to turn on possibly is gonna be my actual UV template have it here but it is here there we go so now I can just go to my channels tab click on my alpha thumbnail to make my selection unlock my background layer do a control shift I so I can invert my selection and then just hold down shift and drag it over like so now I can just close this because I don't need that you can see where my UV layout is. And the reason that this is important is that we're going to be sort of using this as a guide to help us assist with the texturing. If if I'm not completely comfortable with this idea as far as trying to paint in the locations for the rivets for the top and bottom of the plane, uh, I can try to use the, the method that I did previously and blend that in. Um, it just matters what your comfort level is because there is going to be some some tricks to get it to work exactly the way that you want it to. Um, I'll just show you those tricks so that at least you're, you are aware of them. Um, so I'm going to apply an unwrap to this. I'm going to set this to map channel 3 to open up my map my edit UVW window. Then I'm going to load map channel 2. So once I've loaded map channel two, is I'm going to go to this part of the plane, so the body of the plane. That was the, the issue. And instead of doing a projection on the side of the plane, I'm going to scroll down to my parameters and set it to Z and do a quick planar map like so. And once I've done the quick planar map like this here, I'm going to go to my tools, render UVW template, and remember, we saved this off as 2048 by 2048. So I'll render this off, save this as MCO2 or MCO3 template, and a 32 bit per pixel targa. Close that. And I'm going to just save my map channel 3 in case, I, again, I need to come back to this. So then I can close this and close this, go over to Photoshop and open up map channel 3. This is where it becomes a trick because we don't want to really add too much of a, a base color because we're just trying to finalize our rivets. Control shift I, backspace, whoops. Backspace, there we go. Um, so Again, I'm not trying to add too much to this, so I'll just add a base, rivets, and then I'll go to my paintbrush, and we already have the paintbrush set. Let me just check to make sure, yep, everything's set as far as um, my settings from the last set, uh, set up here, where I have my spacing set to 800%, it's a 4 pixel brush. Now the trick is finding the location on this plane so that I can figure out where exactly it needs to go. And one of the locations is on the front of the plane, like so, just in front of the f this first section. So I'm going to go back into Photoshop, and it's in this location here. So I'm going to use my pen tool so that I can draw a straight line like so. 
and then right click and do a stroke path based on the brush. Again, this is on a new layer with my blending mode set to multiply. Then I'm going to go to the other areas that are the issues. And it looks like right here on the wing and then at the next cross section is the other area. So here's the wing and then there's the other section. So looks like it's right here where I'm going to stroke path like so, delete the path, and then also right here, stroke path, and delete path. So then I can turn off my UV template. And this is where the trick is, because we need to just take these areas and transfer them over to our model without too much of a hassle. And <coughs> when I say too much of a hassle is that we look at our, our plane and we want to figure out, all right, what's the color of this going to be? And it is the, the blue. So I'm just going to go back to, oops. go back to this here and then just fill like so. Uh, there is one other section that I need to do and that's right here in front of the windshield. Minimize that. So I can maximize, maximize this. So right here is where the other location is. Rivets, that's right, that's right. I'm just double checking all my settings while I do this. And that looks like the location, so I'll stroke the path like so. And then fill the selection and turn off the UV template. If there were any other areas that I needed to do, uh, now would be the time that I'd want to do it. But with just the rivet locations approximately where they should be, this is definitely a good start. So I'll save this off now. And I'll just call it Mac Channel 3 Diffuse and 24 bits per pixel Targa. And now I'll come back into 3ds Max. So I'll press 0 to open up my render detection window and go to my material editor. I'm going to click on a new shader and go to my diffuse option box, bitmap, and load up the map channel 3 diffuse map. I'll apply it to the model, but I need to remember to change the map channel to channel 3 here when I apply it so that the rivets are showing up in the correct location. And it looks like they are actually showing up in the correct location for right now. Once I've done that, I want to go to my render settings, so zero if I haven't if I haven't pulled it up already. And I have my plane selected, so you can see plane demo one. We're gonna use existing channels so we convert everything back to channel one. And then right here where it says lighting map, because that's what we did previously, I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna add a diffuse map. Diffuse plane demo, or sorry, plane underscore demo diffuse map dot TGA is great, but it really doesn't work for this because we already have a file named that. So we need to name this something different. And I'll just call this plane PROJ MCO3. And I, I'll call it PROJ because it's a projection for map channel 3. Uh, this will make sense in. Uh, a little bit when you see the final result. I'm going to render this off as 1024 by 1024 and hit render. Hit continue. Give it a couple seconds while it renders it off. 
everything basically will be blue with the exception of the, the areas where I added the rivets. So I can close this now again. I can close this and close my render detection window. Now jump over to Photoshop. I'm just going to save off my Map Channel 3 PSD right now. And I'll close that also just so that there's less files to work with. Now I'll open up my render that I did. So plane, projection, map channel 3. And I know that there's number naming conventions and it it's, could get confusing, but this is where you need to be organized. I'm going to hold down shift and drag this over on top of everything. And when I do that, everything turns blue. There are certain areas that I actually need, and then there's other areas that really don't play into this texture map. So I can go to this layer here, which is my um, MCO3, and just use my rectangle marquee and sort of delete this out or remove it. Since really the body of the plane is the only area that is being affected by this, is I can just hold down shift and make some marquee selections to select a large part of my canvas, like so, and hit backspace so I can delete it. And I'm just going to do this with a number of the different areas <coughs> to remove everything that isn't completely necessary. And I'm just deleting. Um, normally I would use a layer mask. And I will be using a layer mask for parts of this. And you'll see. So I'm just getting rid of the, the mass areas. With what's left, I'm going to apply a layer mask now. Because clearly there are some problems. And with the layer mask, I'm just going to go, I'll grab like a 19 pixel brush. Actually, I'll grab a bigger brush. All right. And I'm going to paint black on the layer mask to reveal what's underneath. Right now it is pretty hard. And if I want, or what I'm going to actually do, is I'm going to fill the entire mask with black. So it reveals everything. Like so. And there's only a couple key areas that I really need to paint out. So that's why I'm just going to fill everything with black and use a small brush to paint, bring it back. So I'll paint it with white on the layer mask. And you can see that I have stretching right here. And if I do this correctly, there we go. And the location might be a little off, and that's something that we can fix a little later. But I mean, right now we have a start. And then I can go here. And you can see, again, it, it is a little off as far as the, the location. but I should be able to adjust it. All right, that looks okay. And hopefully you're starting to see this coming along where the, the rivets are being added. And I, I am going a little overboard where it's overlapping and ruining the other texture. Uh, and that's something that I'm going to need to adjust. But what you should notice is that we're getting our rivets to be painted on the surface of our model. And if they're off a little bit, that's something that we we will need to fix. Alright, so let's I got those rivets set. I'm gonna save this off. <coughs> 